All right, let's have a conversation that revolves around the question, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? Are you a disciple? What does that mean? Do we know what it means to be a disciple of Jesus? Welcome to the Christian Bro Code YouTube channel. I'm your bro, Dr. Mario Escobedo. The Christian Bro Code is all about helping you grow as a disciple of Jesus so that you can live, love, and lead to honor God. That's the whole purpose, whether it's a podcast or a YouTube video, that's the whole purpose of the Christian Bro Code. So if that interests you, then consider subscribing and tapping that notification bell so that you're always up to date on the latest teaching. Before we dive into the teaching, let me remind you that I have a free training available for you at thechristianbroco.com, how to kickstart your Bible study library. Look, I believe that if you're gonna grow as a disciple of Jesus, one of the very basic things you have to know is how to do your own Bible study. Not depend on anybody else, but be a self-feeder. We can learn from others, but we need to know how to do our own Bible study. And so I put this training together so that you can begin to put together some tools that are gonna help you do your very own Bible study. So check that out totally for free over at thechristianbrocode.com. All right, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? There, I mean, we could define this in a ton of different ways. There are several different characteristics of a disciple of Jesus. I've chosen just a handful of characteristics to share with you in this video. And the first thing I want to do is I wanna answer two very simple, very basic questions. What is a disciple and what is discipleship? And I'm going to share with you what I share with the people at the church that I pastor. We talk a lot about discipleship at my church. We're learning how to be better disciplers and how to be better disciples. So I'm going to share with you some of the stuff I share with the people at my church. When we talk about what is a disciple, here's how we define what a disciple is. A disciple is someone committed to being like Jesus and to living for Jesus. Every day, we want to grow to be more like Jesus. That's one of the goals of being a disciple, to be like the person you're following. So a disciple is someone who is committed to living, to being like Jesus, but also to living for Jesus. What does that mean? That we, as Jesus' disciples, we are committed to advancing the mission that he started. If we're his disciples, then we're going to do what he did, not just be like him, but do what he did. And so the mission that he came to this earth to initiate is the mission that we will carry on. That's how we define a disciple. So then discipleship is very simply, it flows out of the definition of a disciple. Discipleship is very simply the lifelong process of learning to be like Jesus and to live for Jesus. Notice that I said it's a lifelong process. Discipleship is not a six-week course. It's not a 12-week course. It's not a year-long course. Those are important. They get us started. They orient us. But we need to understand that discipleship really is a lifelong process. None of us has grown all there is to grow. None of us have learned all there is to learn. So discipleship is a lifelong process. This is how I would define a disciple and discipleship. Now, some characteristics of a disciple. Again, there are many, many more than I can present in this one video, but I've I've kind of distilled it down to some of the things that I feel are essential and fundamental when it comes to talking about being a disciple of Jesus. So I'm going to read a passage, several passages, and then I'm going to highlight what I think is one of the, the characteristics of a disciple as illustrated in that passage that I'm reading. The first passage is Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 through 20. This is how they read. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, this is Jesus, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and they followed him. Now, what's the characteristic of a disciple that I see from this passage? Well, a disciple undergoes transformation. Notice that Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. At the moment that he called them, they were fishers of fish. But he called them and he said, I'm going to make you into something that you are not currently right now. You're going to be fishers of men. Now, what they were in that moment, they couldn't see for themselves that they could become something else. But Jesus saw their potential. Whatever he saw in them, he saw it. And so he says, I'm going to make you into something that you currently are not. Disciple, being a disciple and going through a discipleship process inherently involves some sort of a transformation from who you are, what you are right now, into what Jesus wants you to be and into what he knows you can be. So a characteristic of a disciple is that a disciple undergoes transformation, just like these original disciples that Jesus called. Follow me, I will make you. You currently are fishers of fish, but I'm going to make you. You're going to be transformed into fishers of men. So a disciple undergoes transformation. Next passage, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, very well-known passage. 
This is the passage of the Great Commission, right? When Jesus is about to go back to heaven, this is the final and great commission that he leaves to his disciples. Let's read. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, what's the characteristic of a disciple that I see here? Very simply, a disciple advances the mission that Jesus started. I talked about that in the introduction we're defining a disciple in discipleship. It's very clearly laid out here in this passage and other passages like this one that the disciples were here given the charge, the mandate of continuing the work that Jesus started. So he came, he called them to be his disciples. He discipled them for the amount of time that they followed him. And then right as he's about to go to heaven, he says, okay, what I've done with you, you go do it with others. So a disciple advances the mission that Jesus started. We don't have our own agenda. We don't have our own mission that we're going to advance. As disciples, we advance the mission that Jesus started. That to me is just a fundamental characteristic of what it means to be a disciple. Next passage, Colossians chapter 1, verses 28 and 29. This is Paul writing to the Christians at Colossae, and this is what he says. He is the one we proclaim, talking about Jesus, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. What's the characteristic of a disciple here? A disciple strives for spiritual maturity. Notice what Paul says. He says that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. And he says to this end, I strenuously contend. This is what I'm investing all my energy into doing to making sure that people are discipled. He doesn't use the word disciple here, but he really is talking about discipleship so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. A disciple strives for spiritual maturity. No more bottles. No more baby food. Baby foot. Food. No more baby food. If you're a disciple, you need to be striving for spiritual maturity. You can't be right now at the same spot where you were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and claim that you're in a process of discipleship. Discipleship demands that you grow. Discipleship demands that you demonstrate spiritual maturity and that you're not where you used to be. You may not be where you want to be or where you need to be at this moment, but you can't be where you were a year ago. Discipleship demands spiritual maturity, spiritual growth. And so a disciple, one of your characteristics of a disciple is that you must strive for spiritual maturity. Next passage, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. This is what Paul said to Timothy. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 2, and the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Now notice the characteristic of a disciple that we learn from this passage. A disciple is... Well, I went too far. A disciple commits to discipling others. Notice the pattern that Paul is outlining here. He says, the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses. So, Timothy, I've taught you. You've heard me. I've taught you in the presence of many people. I've taught you one-on-one as well. Now, you take it and you teach others. Entrust it to reliable people. And then the purpose of entrusting it to reliable people is that they then will teach others. So, notice that sequence. Timothy learned from Paul. In fact, Paul learned from someone else. Paul taught Timothy. Timothy is going to teach others, and those others are going to teach others. And that's the pattern of discipleship that Jesus established, that there would be multiple generations of disciples. And so our job as disciples is not just to be discipled, not just to grow, not just to be transformed, advance the mission of Jesus, strive for spiritual maturity. But part of that is that we commit to discipling others. And this to me is such a clear passage that that talks about that. Timothy, I taught you. Now you teach others, but he doesn't stop there. Those that you teach, they're going to teach others. And presumably we're going to expect that that chain is just going to continue on and on. So a disciple commits to discipling others. You want to be a disciple who disciples others. The chain of discipleship cannot stop with you. The chain of discipleship cannot stop with this generation of disciples. We must disciple others. That's, you know, we're all a product of that chain of discipleship that goes all the way back to Jesus. Man, let it not be said that this was the last generation of disciples because we didn't disciple the following generation. So a disciple commits to discipling others. Back to our definition, what is the disciple? Well, someone committed to being like Jesus and living 
for Jesus. And so discipleship is that lifelong process of learning to be like Jesus and to live for Jesus. And I want to encourage you, go back and look at the scriptures that I mentioned in this teaching and look at them for yourself, expand on them, look at the context, what comes before, what comes after, so that you have a better understanding of what each of these passages talk about, especially in relationship to what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. That's all I've got for you for now. Until the next time, God bless, bro.